What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex. This is As The Cheese Gaming. And welcome to a special presentation. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at a game that I reviewed a long, long time ago. And give it a full special treatment. And that is Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. This game is also can also be played on a backwards compatible Wii. It is the sequel to Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64. It is the prequel to Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Nintendo Wii, made by Nintendo and HAL Laboratories. So, what makes this game so good? Well, for starters, it's got replayability up the absolute yin-yang such as whether you want to play versus mode, maybe with some friends that you have over. Perhaps you want to play some versus mode versus the computer, like you can see me doing here. Or you can also do team in versus mode. But not just standard versus mode, there's different things you can do. You can do stock, which is what you just saw me playing. Grab the coins or bonus, which is, sorry, bonus is grab the coins or most KOs, I'm sorry. You can set different things within it, such as maybe you want the more damage you take, the faster you get KO'd, or less. Change around the items. Got a whole slew of items within here. You can also set the frequency. You can make them very high or very low. And then there's even more additional rules in here. Such as if you're playing a KO mode, you could make it so self-destructs count for less or more. Or maybe they don't even count at all. So like I said, just within the versus mode alone, it's got replayability up the wazoo. But there's even more. But wait, there's more. Also got, in single player, all these event modes that you can do. If you unlock characters. Which, speaking of, let's actually go through and talk about that. Full bevy of roster and characters here for your playing enjoyment. You want to play someone slow that's more big damage? You can pick someone like Ganondorf. If you want to play someone that's, you know, fast and agile, pick someone maybe more like Fox. Someone that's all rounded, play Mario or Dr. Mario. Maybe you want someone that's got really good jumping abilities. You can play someone like Kirby or Jigglypuff. Someone with some really good throws. You'd pick someone like Samus or say Yoshi. So play styles to fit every person. But as I said, there's plenty more replayability in the game. Whether you're doing say some of these event matches or maybe you want to do which they expanded upon like this one. This was vastly expanded on from the original Nintendo 64, so plenty of replayability. Now, another thing that was also expanded upon was the courses that you can play. Got a whole host of courses. I haven't quite gotten them all yet. Unfortunately, I lost my original file in this game, but I'm getting back through it. Now, when did the, now this is all to say that, okay, cheese, yeah, so it's got a replayability. But, I mean, it's a fighting game, so you need to have solid controls, right? Well, absolutely. And thankfully, that game has this, excuse me, this game has that in spades. So, I want to be able to show you guys what I'm talking about here. So we're going to set this to very easy, so I can tell, so I can show off what I mean by the controls. Now, ideally, if you're playing this game, you want it to be on a Sony Trinitron CRT. But you can play just on a regular HD television like I'm playing here. So every single button does something, whether you hit like this, the X button to jump, your B buttons are special. So for Mr. Game of Watch, he has each direction is a special attack. You can also now throw people in any direction. And one of my personal favorite things about this game is this ability, the ability to hold and then do a smash attack, which is vastly improved upon. Now, when this in this game, in regards to its others, 
in the franchise. This one's probably the most fastest paced out of all of them. Though I haven't quite spent enough time with Smash Ultimate. Which is kind of a double bladed sword because, you know, let's see if we can yank your peach to come off here. You know, it makes it both the most, you know, newcomer friendly as well as the most difficult to master. As I said again, this one's one of the most fastest paced of the entire franchise. So to just pick up and maybe play with some friends and have a little fun with, yeah, you can do that. But to fully master, oh my lord, this game can be, it, it can take years upon years of really playing and trying to perform various techniques to fully master everything in this game. You can actually see me want to play, playing one of the uh, alternate game modes here. This is called Break the Targets which was returned from the original Nintendo 64. And also, speaking of things that were expanded upon, where's the last one? Where's the last target? Oh, there it is. Oh, we missed it. Yeah, wait for it to come back around. Is the music and sound effects, as you can hear the full sound effects of Mr. Game of Watch, who's one of the last characters you unlock. Which I fully enjoy. Each level has its own sound effects and music. Each character does. All their attacks do something different. Like say, I'll cast some, shoot some bacon here. By this being a Zelda level, so you can hear some of the Zelda music. Except you ain't gonna take any. I gotta get him to come. There we go, yes. Nope, nope, nope. Come on. Ow, ow, come. Thank you. Ah, my goodness, you know, just don't want to get off the map, do you? Okay, we'll go that way. Oop. Goodbye, Link. One thing that I personally enjoy in this game is the ability after a KO to taunt. I, you just hit up on the D-pad and you can taunt right after a KO. And if you're playing through the single player, you even get a little Metal Cove Fighter Stance, which is kind of nice. Oh, poor Bowser, the worst character in the game. He's so slow, poor guy. Now, what would be some negatives of this game? Well, for starters, which there are a couple, and mind you, I'm really trying to nitpick here. There, One is, there's no story per se. This is Super Smash Brothers, to be totally honest, I don't think it ever had a story. Many other of the new major fighting games, they all have sweeping storylines, some of which are even cinematic. There we go. Speaking of, there's some collectibles here, some trophies, which I messed all of them up. Oh well, we'll try again next time. So there's no story. And I also just kind of referenced this a little bit ago, but the fact that this game is just so hard to fully master when it comes to fighting games and especially sp fighting games that I personally have played. This probably has to be one of the hardest ones just to really get good, you know, delve into and really get good at and try to compete at, you know, somewhat of a high level. I think this is arguably one of the hardest fighting games. I mean, you know, if you're curious about it, Try watching some pro competitive gameplay of this. The speed at which they play and the movements and everything else is just like, oh my god. But that also kind of takes me for a reason as to why this game is, I believe, a must own for the Nintendo GameCube and all backwards compatible Wii's. Just the fact of just how much fun this game is. I mean, you know, still to this day, this game sees play at high level competitions. Every single Comic-Con that I've ever gone to, I've seen it played. There's usually people lining up for tournaments or for local circuits. So, if you don't already have this game for the Nintendo GameCube or for a backwards compatible Wii, I would just ask you, how come and why not? So, now dear viewer, tell me in the comments below. Do you believe that this is a must-own on the console? Is this your favorite one in the series? Do you prefer one of the older ones? Maybe you prefer one of the newer ones? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time.